Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide. While you're there, check out our learning center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description. So starting off with what you get in the box, with the smart shunt essentially you just get the shunt and then a couple power wires here, a couple fine gauge red wires with a fuse in there. This is to provide control voltage and voltage measurement as well as measurement of a second voltage point like a secondary starter battery or midpoint measurement of a large battery bank. You can see on the face of these smart shunts, and I have two different smart shunts here, one in the 500 amp and one in the 1000 amp. Functionally, they're about the same with the exception of the current handling, obviously limiting this one to 500 amps and this one handling 1000. Um, with the larger shunts, uh, you're gonna get more connection points. You can see on the back of this shunt, you do have some larger studs here to make some additional uh, large cable connections here. But functionally, or in terms of installation, they're both going to be about the same in principle. Um, taking a look at the face of the shunts, you can see here, um, pretty straightforward. We have a Bluetooth light, error light. Our um, power connections, again, our VVAT positive is going to be our primary power. Uh, control voltage for the shunt, the Bluetooth signal, and then primary voltage measurement and our aux is going to be used for, again, a second voltage measurement. If we're utilizing a temperature sensor, we're going to fill both of these ports for temperature sense and then set the uh, aux port to represent temperature, and we'll look at that a little bit later on. Over here on the left, we have our VU direct port. That's going to be used for hardwire communications to our servo or other uh, GX device. All right, let's take a look here at the Smart Shunt and Victron Connect. Uh, so the first thing to mention here is you may find that the layout is slightly different depending on your device. Uh, you may find that these history, status, and trend tabs are gonna be over the top here, and you may have to click on them just to get this information. But on a laptop or larger screen, you would probably find that it'll look some, very similar to this. But let's just take a look at what you'll see here when you first connect. So starting off here in the center is your battery percentage number. Over here on the status to the right, we have our current battery voltage, how much current is leaving the system uh, at this moment, our consumed amp hours, so how much energy have we consumed in this charge cycle, um, time remaining till we hit our discharge floor, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail later. And then our starter, our secondary voltage measurement here. Uh, so, so to get into the programming to start with, we're gonna click up here on this gear icon. If there are any firmware updates at any point that the Victron Connect prompts you, uh, I would go ahead and let them update. Um, and then once we come back in, come back up in here into the settings. Uh, and we're gonna start here in the battery tab. So taking a look here in the battery tab, the first thing we're gonna find is the battery uh, capacity. So this is the capacity of the battery bank in amp hours, and we're just gonna set this to match what the battery bank of the system is uh, in reality. Uh, next up here, we have the charge voltage. Uh, the charge voltage is kind of a trigger voltage that the shunt will use to understand what our charge uh, voltage is for our battery bank. Uh, typically, we're going to be using a value equal to or very close to our battery float voltage. Um, this sometimes needs to be tweaked up and down depending on uh, battery chemistry as well as how active or dynamic um, the loads in the system are. But float is a good place um, to start this value here, Start a good starting point for this value. Uh, next up here, we have the discharge floor. Uh, the discharge floor is the uh, discharge for per percentage here is the place where when back here you're looking at time remaining this is time remaining until we reach 
uh, this discharge floor percentage. So essentially, time remaining till we hit 50% battery. And this value can be adjusted purely based on user preference. It could be set to zero if you want to know till you reach zero, or you could set it at a higher value in the case of maybe a lead, um, lead battery chemistry. Down below that here, we have tail current. Tail current is just a calculation value on um, four percent of of the battery bank size in in amps. Um, that essentially is the um, a trigger that the system or the shunt uses to recognize that the batteries are approaching full. They stop stop accepting current um, when they report full. So naturally, when batteries are full, they will stop taking current and that value should drop below in this case four percent um, below that we have the charge detection time uh, that's essentially kind of what it sounds like that's the amount of time these values need to be true before the system will detect or resynchronize that the batteries are full or fully charged uh, below that we have the pucret exponent that essentially is um, or can be thought about like a discharge efficiency factor. Um, in this case, 1.25 is most commonly used for a lead acid battery. We might go 1.20 on some gel AGM, higher efficiency lead, um, but we'll use 1.05 um, with most lithium chemistries. Um, this is the charge efficiency factor, 95% is typical for lead maybe 996 for higher efficiency, and then we'll go 98, 99% for most lithium. Current threshold, this is just a detection threshold for current measurements, 0.1 is fine. Uh, time to go averaging here, this is just uh, on the amount of um, time to reach the discharge floor here. This is a averaging time, and that three minutes is usually perfectly fine. Down below here, this is something that usually needs to be adjusted or we'd want to adjust. This is going to be set or would want to keep uh, set this to keep SOC. That way, anytime this meter is reset, instead of clearing or going to 100, it's going to remember the last value that it was set at. Um, here, the state of charge, we can set state of charge percentage manually. We do that maybe on occasion if we know the meter is off. And the same thing with synchronized to 100. Um, we can utilize this to synchronize the system state of charge to 100%. And then we have down here at the bottom zero current calibration. We're, we're typically never going to use this unless there's some kind of a problem. So uh, I would just ignore that. Backing out here uh, in the settings, we have the alarm. These are just user definable alarms um, where we can set low state of charge, low voltage, and then a low voltage for the secondary voltage measurement or secondary battery measurement here. Um, below the alarm tab, we have the miscellaneous tab. A couple of things to mention in here. This monitor mode, for most cases, we're going to be using this meter as a, as a battery monitor. But these meters can also be used as DC energy meters. And when we do that, we can then define what kind of uh, energy or what the source of the energy this meter is measuring. That's particularly helpful if we want to measure other devices that are not Victron, but still uh, have some understanding of what they are, or the system and the VRM portal will have an understanding of what what those uh, what those loads are, what those devices are. So this is quite valuable for trying to bring in data again from third-party non-Victron devices. Um, the only other thing we need to look at here is this aux input. This is just where we define the auxiliary input use. In most cases, unless we're running a temperature sensor or we're measuring a secondary voltage, we're going to have this set to none. Beyond that, um, that really covers most of what we have. Um, there is probably in a lot of these as well the VE Smart Networking tab. Uh, that's not represented here, but these can also do VE Smart VE Smart Networking, excuse me, where they can be wirelessly networked with other Victron Bluetooth devices.